This is running a full Audi TT setup. So welcome back to another video. We are on a windy runway and we are here to film this stunningly built Astro Mark III. This is 450 horsepower with a VW Audi four-wheel drive running system. So let's have a dive in and let's take a closer look. Mark III. Nothing really fancy on the outside, bad looks things, but it's a full GSI with the twin headlight conversion, giant front mount intercooler, GSI bonnet vent, and the five spoke Vetra Super Touring alloy wheels. All of those things to pick up on, on the outside are obviously high spec brakes. Not much really more to show on the outside because it's a bit of a sleeper. Now, this is special because it is full four wheel drive. Now, people are going to go, well, why is the back end so jacked up? What's happened is, is the shaft angles have been slightly on a bit of a steep angle. You're kind of having to make up points and having to make up geometry as you build these things so there's no right and wrong way of doing it. So what they've done is they've obviously assembled all the rear diff, their angles are slightly out, so they've had to jack it up just to run at 10 of the best. Then they'll take it back, they'll refine it and sort out the shaft angle. Lovely, lovely GSI four-wheel drive so we've dived underneath to have a closer look this is running a full audi tt setup so that's rear diff gearbox prop shaft and drive shafts i would have thought custom made because obviously they're not going to be the same width but it also runs what looks like calibra arms because as far as i'm aware this was originally four-wheel drive that there is a standard calibra cavalier swing arm and because Vauxhall stuff don't like power it is unreliable and now getting expensive gone over to the vw setup but it looks like a cradle's been made here to support the rear diff it looks like it falls to the floor it looks like they've made this cradle setup where the original calibra diff would have been to take all the audi tt setup the little vw badge so let's dive in under the bonnet and we can have a look at what's been done under there. Here is obviously the magic end. Been converted to a B204, as far as I'm aware, Saab engine, the two litre version. All the fabrication work of in the four wheel drive swap to the Audi setup has been done by Crankworks, who is Andy Crank, who seems to be the, out, the, the Saab and Audi specialist. He's done his Corsa, which we're going to film in the future, but he's also a very, very good fabricator. So as far as I'm aware, he's fabricated the full custom inlet system with what looks like a billet large throttle body, tire wastegate, thrust manifold. I would guess the turbo looks like 30-ish, turno gated by the looks of it. I've seen mill millions of them, Saab powered Astras and Corsas and all that type of thing, but this is where the magic is. This is still manual shift, non-DSG, Audi TT gearbox. So if you look at this bolt here, it doesn't actually go through the gearbox. That bolt to the block, and then the gearbox bolts through the adapter plate, which goes through there. And then your spacer, what I would feel, the flywheel, maybe the maybe there's a custom flywheel in there, maybe there's a spacer uh, off, the fly, uh, off the crank end to the flywheel, to take up that little bit of space. If you look down the back, transfer box there. And again, it's on VW shafts. So I would have thought custom drive shafts. Now what is super cool about these VW sets up, they come with a Haldex controller. And I, the Haldex controller is on your phone. So you can literally program your gearbox and four wheel drive system any way you want to how you want it to drive. Do you want it 100% locked? Do you want it 20% locked? You can even do locking by speed. So let's say at 20 mile an hour, you want 20% lock, 30 mile an hour, 30% lock, and increase. And that is all done by an app on your phone. How amazing is that? Back in the day, it was very hard to get any type of Halbex controller because they were super rare. People never wanted to release the kind of the information about it. If you ask me and you have to do something so strong that would work 
that's kind of reliable. The VW stuff, the Haldex setup is fantastic. It holds so much power, they're cost effective. Let's be honest, this used to run an F28. So I actually purchased the F28 off him. To put it in perspective, an F28 nowadays, a thousand pounds. A full Audi TT, full car, a thousand pounds. It's cost effective to invest the money to convert to something like this. And that's why a lot of people are doing it. Car makes around 450 horsepower, which is more than enough. And again, I think in the future, Tom's gonna go a little bit more power. So let's dive into the interior and let's see how it's all controlled in there. As you say, Astro Mark III GSI dash gauges, one bucket seat, still got some of the original GSI interior, half roll cage. It has this tablet, so the car is on a Link G4 plus ECU, I think it is and everything is tablet based where you can literally plug into the tablet with a mouse and you can map the car adjust everything on it set everything up and that's kind of the future of these things now everything is at hand on a tablet the audi tt shifter this button here is to do with to my knowledge is to do with the settings on the Haldex controller so we can adjust the settings for how it's going to kind of respond on the principle of what percentage of lock by boost omp steering wheel aem gauge the, nothing really to write home about but this is why i like the car because it's very simple it's got all the nice toys on it and it works so i've been able to get the owner's phone so we can have a look at this haldex controller on his phone so currently it's off so i've got it wrong with this it's not that it's down here so let's turn this knob so then that's 50 50 60 40 70 30 and you can just keep doing this all the way through to adjust how much lockup you've got plus as i said you can do lockup by throttle by speed by boost you can do so many things to adjust your halbex it's a pretty trick bit of kit so i've moved along to the side to show you some of the little setup as well the fueling system it looks like single bosch 044 pump into an inline filter what are the really nice little touches as well as the giant fuel tank, there's what looks like a little swirl pot here to assist on obviously in slosh. Anyone knows what doesn't know what a swirl pot uh, is, when fuel sloshes from side to side, the fuel pickup can miss fuel. So you normally pump into a tiny little reservoir, probably a litre of fuel, and then you feed your engine off that small litre because you're never going to slosh the fuel in that little tank enough to make your engine have a problem. So if you look up here, you can see where the chassis rails have been adapted to take the four wheel drive system, again, I'm guessing, of the Calibra or the Cavalier. So we're jumping in the boot area. Not a great deal to show, but what you need to realize is on an original Mark III Astra GSI, there would have been the spare wheel well. That's had to obviously have to go for the four wheel drive setup because I actually think, if I'm, if I might be wrong, but I'm, I'm going to guess these arches may be like Calibra or Cavalier. And th that's from the original fabrication of the car when it was a Vauxhall engine. It was four-wheel drive with the Calibra or Cavalier setup. So I would have thought, looking at the difference in age to the car of these two areas, I would have thought they're been welded in to make the car four-wheel drive, which has then got rid of the boot floor for the spare wheel well. Let's have a quick look under here, just have a look. Yeah, I'd have thought so. So, yeah, so basically it looks like it's all been patched in. Again, aluminium plate, just basically so you got an access panel, which is then to basically to show the fuel setup. The fuel setup's all underneath that access panel. It's got a custom fuel tank, because obviously now it's got a bigger diff, it has to have this custom fuel tank moving it really far back, which is around this back area here, which has the fill up here, because I'm gonna guess, let me have a quick gander. See now the fill up there, the factory one would have come out in this area, which you can't obviously do. Hence him having to build this, which is basically an aluminium support, just so they can basically feed fuel into the, uh, to the tank. This is also like an overflow line, so if you spill, it goes down the hole, goes back into the tank. Very well thought out, very nicely presented car. This is kind of the beginning of the journey of the car on this new progression. It's going to start getting more power. It's starting to dial it in. This is the first event since he's got the car back. 
he has literally had the car back two weeks. He's done some, some small testing around the area, got it ready to go on the road, and then he's come and joined 10 of the best. So, I'll sign this video off. I hope you all enjoyed a quick look at that 4 before Astra. As you can see, the fab work is immense. So I'll sign it off. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all on the next video.